I want to thank um, Lee and Sandy for inviting me, and I'm also grateful to all the doctors who are here because we do research at the National Eye Institute, and I do clinical research, so I experiment on humans like you. Uh, so we're very grateful for patients like you who are all, also, I know, I suspect some of you are in our studies, and I know all our investigators, Dr. Joe McGuire and Sandy, Mc and Sandy Brucker, are our two principal investigators for the ARITS-2 study, and they're doing a great job along with their colleagues. So, so you folks are very lucky to have these great doctors in your area. And we're grateful, as I said, to all of you for participating in our studies, uh, which I think are very important in moving forward uh, research. So I'm going to st talk about nutrition and genetics today. And uh, nutrition is something we can easily discuss because we all have to uh, partake in this. And, and, and to a certain extent, you are what you eat. And, and I think people don't realize that. But, and it gets harder and harder as you get older. Uh, and, and, and sometimes it's difficult to know that you know, the, you're getting diseases in your 70s and 80s. What sort of impact was this when you were very young? Uh, did that have an impact? And, and obviously, we know a lot more than we did before about lifestyles and certain things that are detrimental to us. I think when you were growing up, smoking was not a, a bad thing. I think smoking was actually very common. And uh, smoking, we know, is one of the major risk factors for macular degeneration. For every study, if one who's currently smoking, you double your risk of having macular degeneration. So those sort of things are, 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 are things that we, we're learning over time. So which we know the causes of macular degeneration, we really don't. Um, so as I said, we know about risk factors, things like smoking, sometimes cardiovascular risk, things that like hypertension or high blood pressure, uh, elevated lipids, a serum, cholesterol. Those things come and go. They're not absolute definite things that you see in all the studies, but we do know that they may have a role as well. Uh, so in addition to doing all the things you're doing, a healthy living may be very important. So stopping smoking is probably a very important aspect of this. And of course, our biggest risk factor is aging. And as you heard, Sandy's aging very slowly, unlike the rest of us. So, so that's a good thing. If you can do what Sandy does, that's, that's what I would promote. Uh, so the other aspect is the oxidative stress. So what is oxidative stress? That's the combination of um, oxygen and, and other things that causes these cells to to react and actually turn against you. We all have mechanisms to defend this at all times. And as we get older, this defense goes down. And this may be related to nutrition and, and some of the things that we talk about. So in 1992, we started a study called the Age-Related Eye Disease Study, uh, which was a, a long study looking at the natural history of people with macular degeneration and also with cataracts. And you heard, uh, you heard the results from, from Dr. Alan Ho, and we were very skeptical whether we could do anything at that point. It was supposed to be a natural history study. But we decided to look at nutrition because we really didn't know whether it would have an, an impact. And there were some studies showing that people who eat a lot of vegetables, uh, a lot of, in particular in the study in 1988, suggests that vitamin A and C were very important. But we really didn't have solid evidence with the help of our nutritional specialists, we came up with a formulation which you heard about vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, and beta carotene, as well as zinc. There was a small study looking at zinc, and we all thought, well, that's a high level of zinc, and that really could be detrimental to you. We never thought that would be uh, important, but in the end, it turned out to be an important thing to do. So this study ended in 2001, and we had over 5,000 patients in the study, in which uh, we we flip the coin, so it's called randomization. So it's just been randomly, we can uh, give you that either the real thing or the, the placebo, the sugar pill. Uh, and we separate up the minerals, the vitamins. And we found out the combination of the two was very important. It reduced the risk by about 25%. So that's a modest reduction. It's nothing, it's not a cure. But if you can prevent things, that's so much better. So prevention is what we're talking about. Only it's 25% reduction, but if you look at the whole of our whole nation, if you were to give everybody who's at risk for this, you can prevent close to 300,000 people from even getting the form of disease. So that's pretty powerful. But this is not good enough, so we're hoping to look for a better prevention. 
And in the study, we were able to study patients who had macular degeneration and who did not, and people who had cataract and who did not have cataract. And, and these are what we call observational study. This is not the clinical trial where we flip in the coins. So we're just studying people as they are. And what makes them do what they do? Well, diet came up, and certainly patients who had eaten, now I hate to tell you this, your mother tells you carrots is the best thing for your eyes. Well, she was a bit wrong. It's actually green leafy vegetables. Uh, spinach, collard green, kale, that sort of thing. I know you all love collard green and kale. <laughs> um, but this sort of greens, and it's interesting, we, we actually look at sort of what we call a dose response. We look at people who never eat it, who eat a little, and people who eat it seven times a week. And you can see there's actually a dose response. The more you eat, the less likely you were to have actually the disease. So that's pretty powerful. But it doesn't mean you can recommend it on that basis. Because looking at these studies, you don't know what's different about those people who eat a lot of spinach. Maybe they take their blood pressure medications a lot better. Uh, so there are different things we don't understand about that. So to really understand whether it does anything, we have to do a clinical trial. And that's what the ARIDS-2 is all about. So we found in our study in ARIDS that patients who ate a lot of vegetables, green leafy vegetables, they had almost a 60% reduction in the risk of having macular degeneration. That's, I said, I said, observational data. And then we, another thing that popped up was, was fish, omega-3. Eating fish t two times a week, that's all it takes, two times a week, reduce your risk of having macular degeneration by about 40%. So given these data, and we're not the only ones who found this, there was a number of other studies that, that have displayed these similar findings. So we took this information and designed a study in which we're looking at omega-3, lutein, and zeaxanthine. And this is the ARIDS-2 that both Sandy and, and Joe are, are very much involved in and all their colleagues. And, and I know some of you might be, in the, might be actually participating in that study, so we're very grateful for that. We're looking at that to see whether we can reduce the risk of progression to advanced disease. This is prevention. Uh, to the end-stage end disease. We'll be finished in 2012, um, so hold on and we'll have, hopefully have some answers for you. I know a number of you will, are, are always interested in, in hearing what should I be on, what sort of medication should I be taking. So with the errors, the vitamin C, E, and beta carotene, uh, quite often patients who are like yourself who come in bring in their children, and the children always say, well, should I be on it? I should be taking it as well. And I often say, I don't think that's necessary because the, what we have in those, in those particular vitamins, they don't seem to prevent the early stage to go into the more intermediate stage. So in other words, it doesn't really help you uh, prevent from a little bit to a more, but it does help you from getting to the very end stage. So my advice always is, if you think you're at risk because your parents are at risk, then you should have an eye exam regularly. And for those patients who have those uh, little lesions called drusen that Dr. Garb talked about, the little yellow spots, then they should be on the medication. So instead of everybody just going on them, it should be checked regularly. I think that's the answer for, for your offsprings. Uh, in addition to, to speaking about the, about the genetics now, uh, there was a question about genetics, and it's not a clear-cut genetics. You know, there are some diseases in which you know it goes from one generation to the next. It could be autosomal dominant, in which case half the kids will be likely to get it. Or it'd be called recessive, in which half, one quarter of the children might get it. But it's nothing like that at all. Uh, or it could be what we call X-linked, is related to the mother, it's passed through the mother's genes. And it's what we call complex. Otherwise, we don't really understand. And there are many, many different uh, aspects of this. In 2005, we were very fortunate. There were four major groups that came up, actually five major groups that came up with this finding. And you heard a bit about it today. The genetics that control inflammation. Uh, for example, it's, the, it's called the complement system, which is important for fighting infections. Uh, inflammatory process comes on to help protect you. Uh, it turns out the genetics of this is quite related to this. Uh, although we've found the gene, or the area that we think is important in 2005, we haven't really looked at the genes itself because it's still a long ways before we know the actual genes. So we're looking at that very carefully to see if we can help us design new drugs. Uh, that's actually in place now. Uh, there's another chromosome. With chromosome 1 is the one with, we're talking about, the complement factor H. Uh, in this case, family studies have shown that it's similar family members may have the same, same genetic finding. Uh, and secondly, uh, we've looked at now at another chromosome, chromosome 10, which is an, another aspect. So there are two areas that we're very interested in that we need to look very carefully and do more research on that would help us in the future, whether it be gene therapy 
or identifying drugs that are very important for the treatment. Some of that is ongoing already, and, and then you'll be hearing more about that in the future. In terms of the genetics, should I go and get genetic testing? And I know some of you may have heard of this. Uh, there are kits out there in which there are, there are being, uh, I think one comes from Canada, in which patients are marketed to have their genes tested. I know in my our own study, we have several patients who've had a testing, and unfortunately, I don't think we're ready for that particular step because it's very hard to know what to do with the information that you get from that. We don't have a good prevention therapy other than the vitamins that you're, we're gonna take anyway. So the question is, if you're identified to have the gene, what would you do? How, how would that alter your treatment? At this point, there, there seems to be no real good answer to that. So the genetics is such that it's complex. Uh, we also think the genetics may be related to environment. So if you have a susceptibility, you have that gene or that area that we think is, is important, but it may be the way you your, your lifestyle is. For example, it may be an interaction with the way you've been smoking or some dietary aspect of that. So the, the genetic and the dietary and the other environmental influences may be very important. So those are things that we're studying very uh, very diligently to find out whether we can help you uh, in, in, in this particular aspect. So I think I wanted to say that we've been very fortunate that we found nutritional aspects to be very important. This ARITS formulation with the vitamin C, E, and beta carotene that helps to give you a modest reduction. Uh, it's not for everyone. The offsprings probably shouldn't be taking it entirely. I think it's important to, to have eye exams. If you're at risk, you should be examined at least once a year. Uh, those siblings um, and any family members that are concerned should be examined. Uh, and secondly, we, we have this large trial that's ongoing for more prevention trials. We're hoping that this will help us. And we'll know in 2012. And as far as genetics is concerned, I think there's a lot of information that's going to come that will help us tremendously in terms of further treatment for patients like yourself. And, I'm, and lastly, I'd like to thank all of you for, for participating in our studies and, and for coming today. And, and thank you for having me.